Welcome to Cuisine TV's third and final episode in Lebanon. Last time we enjoyed brunch with an amazing view, devoured the safiha of Balbek, savoured every bite of some phenomenal falafel and ended by trying to eat some sheep testicles. In our final episode of this series, we begin the day by visiting a Lebanese national hero, the much-loved Raji Kibbi. In his pint-sized kitchen, Raji offers an array of traditional Lebanese favourites his family-run restaurant Al Sousi's was once rated by CNN as the best breakfast place in the world. Watching the great Raji Kibbi in action was just mesmerizing. He began by preparing some egg zawarma for us. Awarma is grounded lamb preserved in fat that is usually extracted from lamb tail. This is added to various Lebanese dishes. Raji masterfully merges the eggs and meat. Once the mixture is ready, he lightly seasons the dish. Next up came the fate. The dish begins with croutons made from kobes or Middle Eastern flatbread. Fresh chickpeas boiled overnight are then added to the dish before being layered with yogurt. Some more crispy bread is added to the dish and then lightly seasoned. Pine nuts are then cooked in ghee and are used to top the dish for a sizzling finish. A special tangy sauce begins the process of making the next dish. Green chilli is added to the tangy base, followed by boiled fava bean and chickpeas. The mixture is then mashed up and mixed well. Tomatoes, mint, raw onion and chilli are used to garnish this dish. A little bit more of that special tangy sauce is added before a quick drizzle of olive oil finishes things off. And finally came the hummus. Some salt at the beginning, some garlic, chilli. The mixture is crushed. The main ingredient, chickpeas, is added before being mixed after a light dousing of olive oil, some sprinkling of spice, and a touch of mint. The hummus is ready to be served. Look at that. Good? Very good, thank you. My god, there is a reason why this place is known as one of the best breakfast places here because they make everything fresh, a traditional spread of Lebanese breakfast goods, and they made it within minutes. The guy out there, he's an elderly gentleman, he's been doing it for years. He made it look so easy. He bought all of this out literally within a couple of minutes. So I'm super excited. So I'm going to go straight in here and show you this. Ready for this bad boy? Just look at that, it looks so good. That is unreal. The korma has got a very good consistency to it. The meat is it's a little bit chewy, but it's welcome. It kind of works quite well with the meat, uh, with the eggs. It's quite spicy, it's got a very good kick to it and a very good amount of salt to it. I think the salt and all the flavours from the meat works to make the egg basically very, very delicious. Sometimes if you have just a plain egg by itself, it can be quite boring. This livens it up to another level. It's brilliant. Um, I'm going to try the food. So this is the old fava being pummeled up really well and mixed with a little bit of garnish. Absolutely drenched in olive oil. Oh. That you get an immediate, immediate zing of lemon that just comes through. It's amazing. It's very tasty. I want to go back in immediately for, for more. It's just, it's one of those things that just attracts you to want to eat the whole bowl straight away. All the garnishes on top of it as well. It works really well to kind of bring everything together and make it a really holistic bite when you put it into your mouth. Fantastic, super, super oily, super Mediterranean. It's got a very good kind of Mediterranean vibe to it. I like that. All right, I'm gonna go for the hummus now. 
very interesting way of presenting the hummus here. It's effectively in its raw form. The mushing is being left to me. So let me mush some away in here. Oh, that is so good. It's just, it's just another completely different experience. It's, it's eating hummus with a completely different texture. Here we're having it in the whole form. The chickpeas are cooked so slowly, so beautifully, and it just melts in your mouth. As soon as you put it in, it just disintegrates into your mouth, and you get that amazing flavor. Good bit of chili there, good bit of oil, and you've got a little bit of mint topped off as well, which gives it a different dimension. Right, I'm gonna try the old fate. This is a quite big serving, isn't it? I'm gonna try a little bit of this. I'm gonna go straight in. Make sure to get enough of the croutons, the yogurt, the spices. Might have to use both hands here if you don't mind. Oh my God. That is unreal. You see here? The yogurt is so fresh, it's such good produce. Immediately you put that in your mouth and you think, wow, this is just wholesome, this is good. You've got the chickpeas at the bottom, obviously similar to this, but without the spices, so they taste different. And then on the top, you've got a little sprinkle of certain spices and you've got the pine nuts and the crouton. And that texture, that mixture of texture between the pine nut and the crouton adds a really kind of nutty, crunchy taste to what is effectively quite sloppy to start with. So that little mix is a real, real pleasure on the taste bud. It's so good. En route to our next destination, we reflected on why this restaurant truly lived up to our expectations. And I love these kinds of joints, you know, the ones that are just an old man doing his ting in the back of the kitchen, making it being passed down from family for generations to generations. It's not the most plush place when you go in. It hasn't had you know, millions of pounds invested into it. It is literally just a local man making his family recipe and feeding it to us. That's what it was. And I love those places the best because they are the most authentic. In those places, you can really taste the love that they put into the food. Next, we made a quick stop to try the Levantinian favorite that is kibbe, made of bulgur, minced onions, and finely ground lean meat with Middle Eastern spices. This was always going to impress. So if I tear it open, inside you will be able to see fresh out the fryer, onions, mincemeat, cumin, and all sorts of other flavors, including chili. And the outer shell, it's crispy, it's thick, it's golden brown. And the outer shell is actually, the outer shell rather, is actually made from bulgur wheat. It kind of resembles rice. You have it with uh, doner and all sorts of meat in the Turkish cuisine. But this is a very different way of cooking bulgur in that it's fried and gives it a really crunchy base. It's almost like a Middle Eastern meatball, if you like. It's very, very interesting. Anyway, enough chit chat. Let me try this bad boy. I'm gonna put this whole thing in my mouth. Oh. This man is a genius. This man is a genius. It's juicy, all the meat is moist, it's juicy. And it's like a little packet that just contains so much flavor. As soon as you bite into it, it all explodes into your mouth. You get the sweetness from the onions, you get a little bit of spice from the cumin and chili, and it all comes together in a wonderful little package. You've got to try this tidbit. We searched all over Beirut for a hugely popular Middle Eastern dessert next, made with a noodle-like pastry soaked in sweet syrup and layered with cheese, kunafa is a must-have dish when you're in these parts of the world. <laughs> that is so good. Sometimes when I hear cheese in a sweet dish, don't you just often think, what the hell's going on there? How can you use cheese in a sweet dish? But it's just sweet and gorgeous and the texture works so well. So you can find kanafa across the UK, across the Arab places, Edgware Road for example, but the problem is there, it's nowhere near as good. Why? Because they use the cheese that we find in the UK, the local produce, which is inherently made for savoury dishes. And the balance is not quite right, it all ends up wrong. Whereas here, 
they get the finest cheese the cheese that's meant to be put into this dish and the balance is perfect here and it's an all-rounded wonder of sugary goodness in your mouth with every bite now the little bit of difference here is if you come over here these guys in Lebanon like to eat kanafa with bread this is the bread they use now it's quite strange actually because we've had kanafa across the Middle East in Turkey in Jordan I've even tried it in Palestine it's very distinctive here in Lebanon in that they put it in a piece of bread it's quite a solid piece of bread actually you're supposed to shuck it in here and eat it together immediately you can tell this is going to be super heavy super super heavy mm. Mm -mm. I really like that the bread is quite good at absorbing some of the sugariness if you think it tastes a bit too sugary bread can absorb it and it gives it a good balance it's very very heavy it's not as light as it is without the bread where you can have it in Turkey and Jordan and all the other places I've lifted for example Following World War II, the Lebanese capital was nicknamed the Paris of the Middle East thanks to its French influences, booming tourism and vibrant cultural and intellectual life. Although this may have changed when the civil war broke out in 1975 and through bouts of political instability witnessed in more recent times, the Parisian influences can still be seen in some places today. The Lebanese crepe. The street vendor begins by spreading pancake mix on a hot surface and spreading until it's round and flat. A number of different fillings are on offer. We opted for Nutella and banana. A good dollop of chocolate spread is smothered over the pancake before bananas are finely sliced on. The crepe is then folded, cut up into pieces and served. This is so good it's very easy to make it's very basic it's just chocolate spread and bananas the pancake i think is a little bit thicker than the french crepe that i've had a little bit more doughy but it's welcome actually welcome man. really good and so that concludes cuisine tv's special series in lebanon we've enjoyed every second of the adventure and have been mesmerized by the country's charm, culture, and cuisine. Lebanon, you have been amazing. The food here has been ridiculously nice. Um, highlights got for me have got to be El Susi restaurant, rated uh, by CNN once upon a time as the best breakfast place in the world, and that really resonated with every bite. Another highlight, obviously, didn't enjoy it in the same way, but it's obviously tasting the sheep testicle. That was something uh, outrageous really for me to do. Something I've never tried before, something I don't think I'll ever be trying again. Um, but no, this place has provided so much variety. It's got beautiful history. It's got a beautiful culture. And once called uh, the Paris of the Middle East, uh, Beirut was. So, you know, real melting pot of cultures. So many different people here. The cuisine is fantastic. Uh, and I've absolutely loved it and I'll definitely be coming back here again.